city of mine how i love how i love the city of mine it never gets me down city of mine how i love how i love the city of mine it never gets me Born in the city, I was raised on its edges My pop worked his life when it's gone Blocks up on love in its center If I could live here forever, think it'd be for the better I love the weather, even though it's fog 24-7 I love the people, this is city I met all my best friends And I wanna thank every brick I wanna thank every entrance to every building that I step in In this city of mine, oh, you most my best moments in life See, I fell in love for the first time in Golden Gate Park I saw my first rap show at Great American Hall I used to beg my homies for a ride across the bridge to goof off And spend the whole damn day doing whatever we want Keith drove us down to Ice Place while we roll up a blunt And me and Jack would get stony, walk around and get lost Don't think I'll ever truly pay back while I was lucky to get Just by walking through the city, no, I'm a small part of this I never really had a place to call my own So I travel and I roam till I find that But I'm full of adventure So I wander and I venture And it's safe to say that really I don't mind that I book a flight to try to figure where my mind's at A spot where I don't spend no money Just some time at I mix and mingle with the people till I learn a little I brought some weed and baby Maybe we could burn a little She said you're funny I said no I'm David and I left Sun shining, birds chirping Let me take a breath I'm headed to the city where my chance to make it best what people like to give a little then you take the rest i'm hoping one day maybe i can find a place to rest i fell in love with life and wonder where it take me next i like the hustle and bustle i fell in love with the fashion i feel the pulse of the city is moving me like a passion and it's mine All the situations, circumstances, still we don't mind steady going on. I dance around the street lights. Hey, I know every street sign hanging around the block. Like if you are my friend, then you are welcome any moment. Yo, what it does, people? How are you? Welcome to the party. Look, we're going to have another fantastic stream. Got one of our homies in the party today, so we're going to get into that. But just a quick little housekeeping type things. If you're brand new around here, let us know. Type like new in the comments or something so we know. And then family can give you the welcome crew. If you happen to be watching this on replay, by all means, let us know you're watching on replay. But remember, you can still drop questions in if you have questions, leave comments, whatever. Definitely come back and check all of that. And yes, it's going to be cool. And I see some of our family members is in the chatty chat. You got to say what's up to Paul. Paul, oh, wow, that was tiny. What the hang? All right, let me fix that real quick. Um, Paul is taking over for Keeley and David Hunt for trying to be first. You know, Charlie Mack first out the limo. So welcome to the party, Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan came here quick. And then there's Mr. Camera Junkie is here. Hello, Ruth. Good to see you here. It's been a minute. And I see Camera Junkie and Paul are fighting. <laughs> um, Alec is here. Well, yeah, Alec here. Of course, Alec's here. 
<laughs> and let's see, Big Rich is here. Uh, MJ, man, who changed my font? That looks horrible. I'll fix that later. Um, <laughs> let's see who else we got in the building. Steve Worthy. Dang, surrounded by British cats today. <laughs> Mr. Rob is here. Sammy Super Chat is in the building. And Homesick Mac is here. Good to see you, brother. And Simply Obs is here. And then Callie, just in time. Look, check it out, gang. You guys don't know about what you know about, but let me tell you what you don't know about just in case you don't know. Boom. Coming up soon, people. Coming up soon. Lock it in your calendar. Next week, our special guest will be Callie. Then look, it's so meta. She's in the bottom end over there. See how you do it? All right, cool. Mr. Miles is here. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And Jerry is here. Mr. Raleigh's World is here. And Ken is here. I'm going to be on Ken's show on Monday. So we'll be uh, checking out Beard Science. You know how we do. Joe Scrivener is in the building. And Michael Powell and Gage have made it to the party. Now, Alec, we can't swear because Miss Eileen is here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you guys... Callie said, no one's ever going to use that picture. And I was like, hold my beer. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think she knows that I'm crazy like that. Hold on. I'm I'm sorry, Alec. I got to leave you back there while I fix this because my OCD is driving me insane right now. I don't know why the comment thing decided to do me foul like such, but I will fix it real quick and then we'll be good to go. Okay, there, done. All right, I'm done. I'm stop messing around. Richie Rich in the building. Sammy Super Chat. We already said him. Okay, now we can go. Ladies and gentlemen, party. Here it is. Mr. Alec Johnson from Take One Tech. And as we say around these parts, Sawadee bin long I cop. Sawadee cop. Hey, there you gang. Go. How are you doing? Good. You. you guys already know Mr. Pumpkin Smasher, Alec Johnson. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, I like what you did with the light thing over there. It's cool. It's a little bit more matchy because that, that um peach color I on the pillow. I switched kinda, them on for you. <laughs> I see. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of genius. All right. So how you been? Yeah, good, man. Good. Very good indeed. <laughs> yeah, I, been a, a good week. Well, I think that was supposed to be Mr. Camera Junkie. What what the heck is the R for, Ken? You're messing me up. You know I have, like, OCD, dude. Don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> okay, there you go. What did Sammy say? Oh, I see. Sammy says, remember that he was the first person to interview Callie and Co. Okay. <laughs> okay, Sammy. <laughs> All right, gang. So I really wanted to have Alec on to come and just talk to us because he has basically took the magic pill and I know because something I struggle with, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, like it's kind of crazy. I think I have what is definitely known as maladaptive perfectionism. Um, there's sort of two. There's adaptive perfectionism and maladaptive. I'm definitely the latter, which I guess if you're going to bust out a DSM-5, means we'll tend to procrastinate because I know the task is daunting and going to want it to be absolutely perfect. So kind of like create somewhat of an anxious experience about getting started. Cause know that once you get started, you're in it and you'll be there forever and you're not coming out until it's perfect. Yeah. I think that's about right. There's more to it. Talk to your doctor. I ain't him. I play one on the internet. Um, but yeah, so we definitely, we just go straight into it, bro. Like, when did you notice that you had perfectionism traits? Oh, uh, I don't know, early teens. <laughs> I've always been like that. I mean, I'm sort of fairly new to YouTube, but uh, yeah, a lifelong creator, really. So I've always been sort of designing things, building things, and uh, yeah, always wanted them to be just perfect. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly sort of through work and things like that, there is an element of uh, needing things to be or feeling that they need to be perfect. Uh, but then for things that I'm doing for myself, I tend to uh, take that to extremes because 
uh, I'm basically my own client. And so I bring all of my OCD tendencies to <laughs> the stuff that I'm doing for myself as well. Yeah. 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 Do you think, do you think that you got the trait from your parents? Like, I think I got it from my parents in the sense that, well, I guess, I guess my mom might've been a perfectionist too. Like it's, I don't know, I think about it, but it was just this concept of, look, people are going to be already looking at you weird. So, you know, I'm going to need you to make sure that you don't let them down kind of thing. And then uh, I, I think it grew harder after, but what about you? Yeah, no, uh, I don't think ever I was, I'd, I was never someone who was sort of like, uh, like really pushed to achieve or to do stuff. I don't, I was certainly encouraged heavily, but not, uh, not sort of, it wasn't that it, it's more sort of internal that, I mean, I, I suppose. So there wasn't a stick, sort of like a bamboo mm -hmm. stick or something. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, I mean, it might come like, I don't know whether it's DNA cause they're, they're both, um, my mom and dad are both quite, um, uh, you know, they like things to be done the right way as well. So it's probably just in the blood rather than. <laughs> I think the worst was, thing uh, I did for, for my perfectionism was join the military. <laughs> just made it worse. <laughs> right, right. Because I, I guess, you know, well, that makes sense now. So my, my dad was um, ex-military. So was my grandpa. So was every male in my family ever. But then uh -huh. I, I ended up in the house with, you know, all the women and even when I ran away and then I moved here and then I was adopted by, you know, June's parents, uh, I would say that even like my Korean parents are both somewhat perfectionists and June is definitely a perfectionist. So like I was just surrounded. It just got, it just got added back. So whatever I thought I might get away from, I just think, yeah, it's been there forever. Um, so uh -huh. when did you come up with the idea that it might be slowing you down? Uh, well, it just sort of became self-evident over the course of 43 years. <laughs> <laughs> and these shoes are self-evident. That's American, dude. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it did take, uh, it did take a while, but yeah, it's, um, and it's like I say, it's for when I'm doing stuff for myself that I notice it most. So things like, you know, the channel and stuff like that, uh, whenever I've wanted to do things like that before, then there's, you know, I'm always wanting to tweak things and, you know get the website just right, get the logo just right and all these sort of things. And all of that, I just basically decided I need to put that all out of the window for this one. So it's a case of learning to be uh, happy with the imperfections, knowing that you're aiming for something that's better, I suppose. <laughs> yes. You know what it is? Um, I think there's a, there's a position where you're like doing something and you notice you just spent like an hour tweaking on something that maybe 3% of the population might catch. And then oh, not after, even 3%. <laughs> after, yeah. After you give up and put it out, no one even mentions it. And you're like, yo, yeah. nobody mentions it. I spent hours fixing that. How the hell they don't notice. <laughs> it's like, soon, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Like, did you notice that I had this exactly this way or whatever? And they're like, uh, what? No. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. You know, or like, all right. I don't know if I can pull this off, but my if I take off my overhead camera right now and I point it down, I have the leather desk mat. Mm -hmm. If I pull this guy out, because I do it a couple times a week, it is exactly two inches from the edge <laughs> on both sides because I'm glad I measured I'm not the only one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want you guys to know, yeah. like if I turn on the overhead camera right now, it is exactly two inches from the edge on both sides and in the middle. Cause I actually measured it. Cause I'm yeah, that person. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one who does things like that. <laughs> and none of you guys see when you see my desk, all you see is the leather part. Like you barely, if ever, see anything but the leather part. You know when I here, I'll, I'll just show you because I'm such a weirdo. Um, but like if I turn this on and then I do my standard issue crop, which I normally have turned on, and then I go like this. And then I pull this sucker down like this. This is all you ever see. No one knows it's not crooked. <laughs> but look at the top. Look at the top. There's the exact same gap all the way across. And the keyboard lines up flush like nobody's business. Because, yeah, I'm that that dude. So, okay. At least I know that I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm with you, you know, Alec. <laughs> you, you know the, uh, the, the, the shaker group. So yeah. a religious group of the yeah, shakers, yeah. and they just the shakers. design and build I, furniture. We used but to they, live in um, Shaker Heights, so in like a legitimate oh, right. neighborhood in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, their their thing about furniture was perfection, like because I designed furniture before as well as a hobby. <laughs> Never actually made a huge amount, but uh, it was one of my things I used to like to do. But one of their things was uh, that everything should be like perfect on the inside and out. So designing things so that even the bits that you can't see, of uh, you know, I've got that level of perfection to them, and uh, that's something that really resonated with me. I do like you know, even if somebody else isn't going to see it. I do just like to know that it's right. And <laughs> it's, ki- it's kind of funny, the idea. Um, you know, there, uh, being an ex-Apple person, right, the, uh, a common joke with folks is that when Steve built the next computer, you know, he wanted the black paint on the outside to also be on the inside of the case, even though nobody was ever going to open that computer. <laughs> it was kind of a complicated yeah. beast, but that's just the thing. It's just something that you do. Mm-hmm. And like for us, when we do our furniture, a lot of our contemporaries will spray the tops and the legs and everything like that. But we actually spray the bottoms and the undersides as well. And then, you know, people often say like, why do you waste, you know, putting like five coats of lacquer on the bottom? And then, Mm -hmm. I don't know, because moisture gets in from the bottom. Like we live in a tropical environment. You want to seal it, seal it. Not like seal the top because it's cute. You got to seal the whole thing. Yeah. It's like, uh, don't waste time on that, you know, blah, blah, We need to get it done faster. And we're like, no, you picked us, so you're stuck with us, and we're going to freaking <laughs> lacquer the bottom, so it's going to take five days to dry. And they're like, no, most people will let it dry in like a day. I go, yeah, and so then the top gets marred, and they always come back like a year later to fix it, don't they? And they're like, oh, yeah, and that's because you didn't give it time to dry. Shut up, you relax, sit there, and... If you wanted it faster, you should have told your architects to send us the plans faster, you Jack Weevil. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm arguing with the architect. <laughs> uh, you, you guys are some of the most hated people in my world. So I'm glad you took woodworking so that you would understand because they never understand. They're like, oh, but it worked in the computer. And I'm like, yeah, wood and computer are different, bro. I'm a computer person. That's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> and if we normally go all the way through the project and have to actually build the failed one to tell them that it wasn't going to work. It's pretty hilarious. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess what made you decide to attack it in this way? Because it's pretty incredible. Like, I don't know if you understand how incredible what you've managed to pull off is. But um, yeah, it's kind of incredible. Uh, I think it's uh, it, it's just a, a something to help me to get over myself, really. And uh, part of the reason for me doing the uh, the videos through Ecamm and doing, I, 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 first of all, the name of the channel Take One Tech. The idea is that I just make these videos in one take, so I don't do any uh, editing. Usually, occasionally, I have to like if my uh, my kids run in or something like that, although normally I do them before they're awake. So then maybe I have to chop a little bit out. But essentially, I just sort of sit down and make a video. So there's a number of things that are going on with the, the channel, really. First of all, is just getting into the practice of being able to sit down and just make a video without actually a huge amount of forethought. <laughs> uh, being able to speak uh, almost extemporaneously, I suppose. So uh, just make coming up with stuff on the spot. So they're certainly not scripted and I don't have like bullet points or anything like that. It's just a case of if I was to tell somebody, you know, most of my stuff's obviously like tech tutorial type thing. So if I was to tell someone how to use this thing, whatever it is, then uh, me just sort of rattling it all out basically. Uh, and the big part of that was so that I didn't have to do any editing because I have had a bit of experience of uh, creating some content where I was editing it before for a, a course for some other work related thing that I was doing. Um, but I found I was my own worst enemy because this is where the perfectionism sort of kicked in that if I knew that I could retake something, then I would literally like 50 takes of me just, you know, if it was a course introducing module one, I'd be like, hello, welcome to module one. And I'd repeat that like 20 times to get it just right. <laughs> and then, you know, literally, a 30 minute, you know, tutorial video could take me, you know, six hours of actual footage and then I'd got to edit it down. And so then my perfectionism in the editing would kick in as well. So I thought, right, I've got to just find a way to be able to just do this all in one take live to tape or, you know, not necessarily a live stream, but just live to tape. And then as soon as I removed that element of being able to edit myself, uh, I found that actually, you know, I just, I was much more comfortable with it. And so <laughs> that's sort of where the, the idea for the channel came from. And yeah, the, the sort of the rate of production of videos is basically just wanting to get into the daily habit. If I did like one a week or something like that, then it wouldn't become that habit. And yeah, somebody mentioned, <laughs> you know, if you just 
do your first hundred videos that there's no point in uh, in sort of looking at your stats and things like that until you've done at least a hundred videos. So I thought, well, let me just yeah, somebody get those mentioned all out that. Of the way. I mentioned it. Damn it! It was you, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll find that mo most things I talk about you, you, you're the one that I've learned them from. So, and in fact, a lot of the videos that I've done are things that you know I've learned from you. So, <laughs> no, I was just tripping out all of a sudden because I just realized something that when it goes off the screen, Ecam doesn't know what to do with it. That's kind of awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just had a I had a nerd moment. Um, whoa, yo, oh, you know why I did that, Alec? Dang it! Oh, Ooh. Moom! <laughs> dang it! Come out of there now! <laughs> Hold on, now it's I gotta my, put it my, back. It's my fault. Uh oh, dang it! I blame you for this one. This is all you. <laughs> okay, come back over here and hove to one side. All right, cool. And then now <laughs> I can kind of stretch it back out. All right. Anyway, so. Gang, I wanted to show you guys this. This is Alex Channel. 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 Ch channel. You know what a channel is, right? You're British. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gang. I, all right. This is why this is cool. Yes, I do say, and it, it's not from me. It's from a bunch of other YouTube people. But I do say you need to do like 100 videos before the algorithm even has enough data to give you the information you need to execute a pivot, right? And so what happens is most people um, will start their process. They don't see in the media take because there's something weird about actually this relates to perfectionism. There is a situation where the Internet is presenting everything sort of in its best light. Well, not really, but in theory, I take Instagram made it worse. Right. So people would take 19 shots of piece of food. And they'll send you the best one. And then as filters and stuff came into play, they'll edit. And then, you know, just things just look sort of perfect, even though they're not, right? So now I give, I think that gives people this idea that they have to bring the heat or like stay in the kitchen kind of thing. And they'll start their channel and they don't get 100 subscribers in their first five videos. And they're like, nobody's watching this. Not that, hey, you know, 80 people are watching this religiously, they dip before they have enough information to find out what needs to be done. So the cool thing, I look at this, here's your last video was 19 hours ago. And then if we whip scroll it all the way to the bottom, cause you know, Logitech MX master three, um, come down here. The first video was like two months ago. There is literally like a hundred videos. <laughs> In the it's last a, it's two 83. months. 83? <laughs> 83 and 79 days, yeah. Good googly moogly. Okay, and gang. The, the average length is 28 minutes, 43 seconds. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit OCD like that. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of crazy. Like, there's one short, other than that, like, you put in a massive amount of work. And I must say, it is kind of cool because two things that you cover in that one, you, in order to start, right, you do have to put in those reps, right? If you're going to do any sport, like any type of competitive thing, you would want to play like a hundred times in the first couple hundred days just to get that muscle memory going. Then you could peel back and play like once or twice a week and you'll be good to go. But that's just how you would do it. Right. Um, it's, it's like basic. We go to basic for, you know, 51 days straight and we do just the most insane training and then you might not never see a you know conflict for years and then you train like once every two months after that but that initial base foundation of how to do all the things is already there so you've kind of taken care of that and I like the idea of doing it extemporaneously so that way you do not get into this perfectionist I need to fix this edit. I need to adjust this edit. I need to do this. I need to do that. But one thing, gang, I don't know if you guys noticed this again. Even if you already posted all of your videos, you do have time to go back and change. Oh, I don't want to see that big, ugly mug. You do. <laughs> you have time to go back and change because you see all of these nails, fam. Alec got his nails did. Right? Like, they're all basically the same myriad um versions of head and face but but 
it's good because when you land on this channel, you know where you're at. Okay. I think that is super important. Let me check on Jerry. Jerry said something I struggle with is I've always been, I had these big ideas of what to accomplish instead of taking them into small chunks. And then I get disturbed by the process and don't follow through. Welcome to the club, Mr. Jerry. That is fully understandable. And, um, I believe who said that it might've been, uh, who said that? Oh, it was Paul. Paul said that the concept of eating an elephant, an elephant. Oh my God. See what I did. I just tried to call you an elephant. <laughs> eating uh, eating an elephant uh, one bite at a time. Um, Paul, never mention eating elephants in Thailand. They will get extremely upset. <laughs> I'm just saying, they love elephants. Did you get the right one yet? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty that cool, right? One of the first things I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's super yeah. dope. Um, uh, oh, I see. Callie and India are having conversations with themselves. <laughs> Uh, when we started live streaming to, yes, exactly. We were just talking about this the other day on Heather stream with Rebecca about how she needs to just get into live streaming just to get the crust off of wanting everything to be, you know, sort of perfect. It really will help. <laughs> um, Rich, it that definitely is, helps. I will tell you that it, it definitely helps. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely helps with the cropping that is. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is super funny. Everyone is giving you like props, so I appreciate that. Okay, now I'm in the kitchen. I can take the heat. Hold up, 100 videos in two months? Yes, yes. I mean, literally, that's what it is, you know? Um, and it, it's funny because there's accomplished creators who haven't really put in 100 videos yet. So it's it's kind of... It's kind of on point, man. I just want you to know that. Thank you. Isn't a new hat dope, gang? You can get it at ecam, uh, merch.ecam.com. Very I cool. It. I also it's have the uh, the same issue as you. Most hats don't fit me because of my... Uh, <laughs> Rather my, enormous my melon. <laughs> That's yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> uh, video By the way, the, uh, pedicure. Nope. What? Because <laughs> uh, you said I got my nails done. <laughs> Oh, I got it. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. So we had By this the way, thing those, about uh, your those... jokes, Rob. So, yeah, go ahead, Alec. I'm not looking at Rob. <laughs> so, those uh, thumbnails. So, all of those pictures, it was just one. Like I sat in front of the uh, the green screen and just took, like, I don't know, 50 pictures. And that's where all of those images have come. And then just I dumped them all into Photoshop. So, uh, it was one of those things, like, uh, I think... A lot of people are sort of struggling to get going and so they, they they find it hard to make a start but then you'll get some people who say oh the easiest way is just go live with your iphone or something like that but i think that there's, there's somewhere in in the middle which is understanding what your minimum viable product is so for me it was accepting that i'm not going to be perfect right out of the gate trust me when i look at my thumbnails on my website to, for the the the, uh, the channel or anything like that there's so many things that just scream at me out at me like I hate this. You know, this is this could be so much better. Uh, but it's understanding what that minimum viable product is. And for some people, that might be getting on your iPhone and just streaming live with your iPhone to YouTube. Not but me. For me, that 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 would never do it for me. <laughs> so it's it's finding that balance really and setting something that's realistic that you can do and just sort of get going with, uh, without sort of really fussing over those finer details. And You're speaking my is, language, I've... bro. You're speaking my <laughs> language, hundred percent. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's it. It's just, it's just sort of. Um, uh, I think you talked about it with um, uh, uh, when Michael did his first live stream the other day, and you said, "Oh, he was just getting his ducks in a row," and that's exactly right. It's just sort of getting those bits set up that you can be comfortable with, uh, but you don't need it to be perfect straight away. And this is the first sort of uh, the first time I've done something like this where I have actually just sort of let go of stuff to the point where I'm not happy with a load of it, but <laughs> I can live with it. <laughs> That's cool, man. Okay, so I, I agree with something you said right now, and it's something that I've been trying to explain to people um, about your MVP because what I completely disagree with, and I kind of want to make them stop saying it, is all of the people that will come in with studios that look like ours talking about, you know, gang, the gear doesn't matter. It's like, why are you lying? Why are you lying? Will you be willing to come out there looking wrecked up from the neck up and do your no <laughs> if i said okay let me take all your stuff back and we're going to go back to a logitech c900 not even a 920 we're going to take it old school stick you at 540p 
You know, you were you willing to go to like a C nine hundred and one of those little crappy like headset microphones that came with Dragon Dictate? No, you just ain't. So stop lying. You can't say that. Nor are you going to fly across the ocean in a biplane. Nor are you going to play football with a leather helmet. Nor are you going to drive cross country in a Yugo. None of the above. So stop saying gear doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. But you do need to know you can start where you start. Start making a plan to move up. And like mm-hmm. you said, know what your minimum viable product is. You can, in certain industries, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to just come out with looking whack right let's say all your clients were going to be architects you ain't coming out here looking soft you cannot because they're weird they're just i mean they got 80 dollar erasers fam where are you coming (laughs) with a janky blurry shaky whatever kind of video horrible audio trying to convince architects to use you as a independent review before you submit for permits, they're not listening to you because they're used to, you know, Stadler pencils that are 20 bucks a piece. Like, where are you going to come with that? No, it just doesn't work. So I wish people would stop saying that. It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a lie. <laughs> it just is a lie. <laughs> um, Miles, the answer is 16 by nine. It's the, the answer for ratio for everything video period for what we're doing is 16 by nine. And, Honestly, you could go to Envato and just download an in-card template and be gold. Um, you can do a couple myriad other things. I Actually, mine's come from Envato, now that I think about it. I, I pulled it directly off of Envato. I adjusted it to make it look like how I like it, and it's a thing. You can also connect with your boy Chris Wood, as in Creative Taekwondo down there, and just have him help you out, because he can just probably do it for you quicker than that. And, oh, everybody already answered him, see? <laughs> um, yeah. don't the other- I, we, we don't add the videos in the program, Miles, by the way. Just make it blank. Mine is a plain Jane, all American blank movie. It doesn't have anything in it. I, I can show you real quick, but I got to only last for a couple of seconds because it, it hangs up the stream. It, it, it's blank like that on purpose. When you watch it at the end of one of my videos, YouTube puts in the other two parts. So yeah, just make it as a, it could just be a picture. You didn't even got to be cute. Like what I just did. You can just make it a single picture and then have it pop up. If you watch the ones on the Ecamm streams on Friday, it is literally a orange block. It has no elements on the screen whatsoever. All the elements are put on by, by YouTube after the fact. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Uh, <laughs> said radiologist a weirder. <laughs> um, yeah, because, it, yeah, see, it's funny, right? We, Tommy just said engineers are weirder. Yeah, I, they're kind of the, one and the same, but not quite. Uh, yeah, architects so are engineers so yeah. with pencils. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the thing about me is I'm I've sort of I come at it from both, both sides, so I'm doubly weird because <laughs> I'm sort of like engineering, but also the architecture side as well, and uh, like the graphic design. So I'm sort of got those internal conflicts all the time with myself <laughs> for those two different mindsets. Yeah, it is. So basically, yes. Uh, to rephrase what I said, architects are engineers that are artists. So uh-huh. you add that matter of factness of engineers mixed with this sort of pseudo creative <laughs> mind of an architect and you end up with a uh, jiggly puff, like just some weird <laughs> creature that's, you know, mythological. <laughs> uh, y'all mythological people are comical. Yeah. That's basically what it is. So he said, here's the recap. Alec made a hundred videos in two months with uh, super similar thumbnails. Each at twenty eight forty five, mostly done. No, all done in one take. And they keep the editing. And uh, his bald head helps his hat fit. That is the That's perfect synopsis. <laughs> yeah. Catch you all that later. <laughs> hey gang, we out of here. We see you in class. Yeah. Yo, okay, that was well done, Elmery. I gotta say, 
that is the perfect synopsis of what we said. <laughs> and the bigger question is, Hunt, why are you late? <laughs> That's the better question. Um, another, yeah, you know, another Jude, thing I'll Jude say is kind so- of one of those doubles, man. He's half architect, half engineer, a little bit, right? Sometimes a lot of the gear section, if you're if you're client facing, the choices are already made, right? And it, it is not always about you. And there are certain like industry standards. Very much correct. Very much correct. Go ahead, Alec. I was actually on gear selection. So uh, that's another sort of thing of the channel. So part of the uh, the point of it is to do this sort of daily practice, if you like, although it's not necessarily always daily, but uh, uh, it's also just to see what happens if you do post consistently. So it's it can be like an example of uh, what happens if you post consistently to YouTube, how, you know, how, how quickly can you grow a channel? But another thing that I was quite conscious of is uh, not necessarily wanting to do it with all the latest gear. And because I think that a lot of people do get bogged down in that. And I totally agree that you've got to sort of aim for something, but don't let that be something that holds you back. And so the first thing that I bought was the mic because I definitely needed to have better audio quality than I could have created otherwise. Um, But the camera is a 10 year old uh, Canon. (laughs) My Mac is an ancient Mac, but I'm just doing it to sort of almost prove a point. Although I have got a Mac mini on the way because I noticed when I was doing a live stream with a couple of guests on, uh, it sort of, it, gave it issues yeah so, it runs out of course like yeah. so this is not factual factual but it's kind of anecdotal you need a core per yeah. guest right now right people say well i had a four core machine and i had four guests what happened yeah okay so you got a core poor guest right yes where's the core for the computer to do what it needs to do huh uh-huh. we mean a <laughs> core per guest plus the computer needs one or two for itself so not that there is a six core, but if you had a six core, four guests, you're okay. Since it doesn't kind of work that way, you either got four core or eight core or 10 core. Yeah. So you need a core per guest and then the computer needs like at least one or two for itself. Right. So if you yeah. have a Intel core two duo, you get to do your show solo. Cause first <laughs> of all, you shouldn't have an Intel core two duo because that mm-hmm. was from 2012. It's 2022 yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even gonna get started on that. It's 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 the uh-huh. curse of Max. They list last forever. That 2009 back there, all day, every day, just hammering away. And yeah, I yeah. get it. It works, but does it? You know, it's like yeah, your grandpa's yeah. old Chrysler. It starts up and it can go to the grocery store. But again, you're not gonna drive that sucker cross country because you guys will be on that 1997 get out and push Chrysler. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I get that, but then I don't, right? Because like I lived in Japan and electronics there are cheap. You know, it's not cheap there, meat. <laughs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> um, how, how do you make that adjustment? You adjust accordingly. Like there, no matter where you go in the world, you will gain one thing and then hurt somewhere else. So you have to make adjustments accordingly, right? So if I was in, say, your position, JFK, I would take my clientele and try to get them from a different place where I could work on economies of scale and have that stuff happen. So, for instance, here's the best way to put it, right? The reason why all cameras end at 29.59 is because the camera manufacturers don't want to pay the four and a half percent tariff that you have to pay in order to not have it classified as a video camera. Sony said, I'm going to pay the four and a half percent tariff for a clientele. I'm going to change the price of much by 12%. So everyone goes, yeah, Sony is expensive. And we go, yeah, but we got no recording limit. So we don't care. So we pay the extra. It's not that much. At the end of the day, we're talking like 50 to 100 bucks, but we don't care. We'll pay it. So you'll go out and you'll get, say, okay, the new ZV E10 is coming out at 700 bucks, right? If Canon were to drop one tomorrow, it would be 600 bucks. And then everybody would see, I'm going to get the Canon because it's cheaper. But then you cripple yourself. So Sony is like, 4% 
on 600 bucks would have put us, let's just call it 625 to make the math easy. That's not the right number. So we could have normally charged 625 and then we got it covered. We can have unlimited recording. Screw that. We're going to bump it up to 700. We'll make an extra 75 bucks on it and have no limit. And then people will buy it and everyone does. So you, I know people, it's the most difficult thing you're going to learn today, but take the word expensive out of your face. Like, just don't even say it. It doesn't match your value proposition. Perfectly fine. I don't have the resources to hit that at this moment. Perfectly fine. I am working to get to that level. Perfectly fine. Saying it's expensive tells you to stop working at it. Just let it go and be a victim of my circumstance. And that will forever, 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 like hold you back. Right. So if all of a sudden something happens, it's probably going to happen. Let's just get it twisted. Something happens globally where we no longer run the financial chain and our dollar becomes worth 50 cents somewhere. I don't think that's going to make me want to change the level of gear and stuff that I use. It just means I would have to do X amount of more work in order to get those jobs done. It just, it's a thing, man. It's a thing for folks. And yeah, so you live in Thailand. That's a prime example. You're not walking into the store and just buy half the stuff that you got to get. You got to go through some hoops, right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can get pretty much everything here, but I'm in, in the sort of uh, remote Northeast of Thailand as well, but we've got something here called Lazada, which is in Southeast Asia. It's sort of a, an Amazon equivalent, I think. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, you can get most things here, but yeah, it's certainly not just sort of walk in and get it. But to Jake, uh, Jay's point, uh, he's mentioned about, uh, needing to get the audio right first. And that, that is sort of the thing is prioritizing what is the, uh, you know, what are the steps you're going to take? And as you've just said, doc, just keeping in mind, like the ultimate goal and sort of working towards that. And, uh, I think people putting these sort of barriers up that they can't start because of X, Y, and Z. If you can uh, sort of make a plan for, you know, how are you going to achieve it? Then, uh, yeah, you can just certainly get going. And one of the other things that I learned from you was, uh, uh, about buy me a coffee. So, you know, you don't have to worry about waiting to get monetized on YouTube. And I've been just amazed by the sort of success of buy me a coffee and the, the channel, like all the sort of costs that you have associated with it. Like, you know, there's, they, they all add up a little bit. You know, I've got a website which I'm running on Squarespace. I'm an ex-web designer, but I still use Squarespace. But then there's things like TubeBuddy and all those sorts of things. Uh, and they all add up to these monthly subscriptions. But I'm totally cost neutral at the moment. Like from what's come from uh, buy me a coffee from uh, I've made like a few digital downloads. I don't intend to make a career out of making digital downloads for Stream Deck icons and stuff like that. But <laughs> you'd be surprised by if you've got these things available that you've created and that you've done just making them available to other people. I mean, like one of my Stream Deck icon packs is like $2 because it's like, well, it's only a few icons. It's just to make it a no-brainer for, for people. For I've got people another couple in there it. that are yeah. like $15. And but some people will try it and it not even use it. So, hey. Yeah. But it, it does mean that it's been like sort of cost neutral for me. So, uh, you know, and just sticking like a goal upon buy me a coffee and things like that. There are ways that you can think that you're going to be able to, you know, some people might have this thing that, oh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to afford X, Y, and Z. Well, if you just put these things in place, then, you know, there are ways to achieve it. And that's, that's another thing that I'm hoping to illustrate with the channel really, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and to be able to be able to pull it off and then sort of come in at a level where you're cost neutral, that's kind of an important thing as well. Right. So mm -hmm. yes, there are things that you can do and I'm with you. Like I still have Squarespace. I can build the WordPress site my business partner owns a WordPress hosting company and one of the best WordPress <laughs> plugins available to man. And I, I don't know, man, Squarespace is just faster and easier for me at the moment. Cause it's there. Squarespace is not Wix, man. Squarespace at the <laughs> business level is uh, yeah. roughly about 400 bucks a year. Yeah, you know what I mean? Up. But it's your business, man. Like that's your card. Like that's where people come yep. and find you. That's where you get the, the, my Squarespace email is where I get the invitations to twit. Right. Mm -hmm. My Squarespace email is where I get the invitations to go speak at conferences and things like that. So mm -hmm. imagine if I didn't have that Squarespace thing in place. Yeah. Like it's just one of those things, right? It, it, it definitely gets to a point where 
Yeah, there's just normally some adjustments that have to be made in order to decide like how you're going to do what you're going to do. It's 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 a tough conversation because you know everyone says that oh my my <clears throat> everyone says my experience is different because I have X, and I will say yes, but I guarantee you it there is an algebraic equation in there that if I pull you out of it, put another you <laughs> in the exact same place in a different spot but with a different mindset you'll get a different thing. Variables can mm-hmm. have a lot to do with what, what it is, right? So I'll, one thing that I'm starting to come to grips with, and I think this has to do with us perfectionist type people, um, I could absolutely go to certain people who are in the perfectionist camp and give them the entire suite, right? I mean, walk into the Apple store, build like seven Mac pros and label them Monday through Sunday, right? Go and put a Sony a one at six grand a piece on every one of those cameras, go out and get a $13,000 Neumann microphone and put it on every one of those systems and set it with a Neves SSL digital soundboard that they used to produce Madonna on, put it in every one of those, build an entire different studio room for each one and have everything there. And then, the next Monday, they still wouldn't produce a video. It will be something <laughs> else. So, yeah. I, unfortunately, yeah. that's I, Unfortunately, there's, there's something else. Like, what are you really, really, really holding back from? Because there are people in our community who we know who has actually had the means to buy all the things and they still haven't produced anything. Yep. I actually dealt with a client that... He literally brand new Mac, brand new computer, mics, everything, had Roadcaster Pro, the whole nine yards, all of that, like a year ago. I know for a fact he still hasn't produced a video. Mm-hmm. So it's not always like you said. Get, there's there's something else you got to dig down deep and figure out like what whatever it is. And, and yes, you ain't never lie. September twelfth, that is I. I think Tommy is right. The fear of failure. Did you ever have a position from where you had a fear of failure? Uh, that is basically the the thing that has always held me back from putting things out, or from that that has you know it's 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 getting over that hump uh, with everything. That's that's sort of part and parcel of the perfectionism. You know, is actually uh, uh, thinking that it's not going to be good enough. That's that's always kind of underlying <laughs> through it all, really. I suppose. <laughs> Uh, but there's also it's um it's sort of fear of uh, failure in public against I, I guess or you know what people are uh, another big one is kind of what people are going to think of you so um that would have always been you know I would have always been too self conscious to do these sorts of things before um whereas uh yeah just sort of getting over that is a is a big hurdle that is not to be underestimated you know a lot of the reason I think why some people haven't maybe made those videos is you know it's 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 still coming back to this perfectionism but not just what they they they're comfortable with putting out themselves but how other people are going to view them and if they're going to you know make a mess of it or things like that and what you realize is once you start doing it that people don't really care <laughs> well see uh, uh, Luis just up. just checked in on what i said earlier in the day for me personally perfectionism yep. is my procrastination in disguise mm-hmm. but yep. i believe that my it's kind of weird it's a it's a um or a boris for me because my procrastination uh-huh. is also due to my perfectionism, right? So yeah. I think for me, it's a little bit of an Ouroboros, right? Um, me too. I definitely will go longer to get something started because I know that once I get in, I'm going to wig out on it forever. But then at the mm-hmm. same token, part of the reason why like, I don't want to get started, it makes me put it off, is, yeah, I think I'm on both sides of that. It's it's a little weird. The- I, I often, you know, pr- the procrastination, that's a whole nother show. <laughs> because that is something that is something different. But yeah, a lot of the things that I'm sort of perfectionist about and I spend the time on, they are things that I enjoy doing. It's not like I'm sort of sitting, racking my brains about things, thinking like, oh, no, it's not right. It's like I actually do enjoy the process of refining a de- design and finessing the details and all that sort of stuff. And I often find that I will maybe procrastinate on some other stuff to focus on perfecting the thing that I haven't released because <laughs> I enjoy that. So it's like perfectionism, uh, procrastination is often driven by, uh, you know, 
avoiding the things that you don't want to do to do something that you enjoy doing. And so if you enjoy perfect the, the process of refining a design, then you may be procrastinating on some other stuff that needs to get done. While yes, doing yes, yes. This other stuff well, that you're not putting out. Okay, <laughs> so so let's, let's tighten this up real quick because you just said something that I find also true. Do you enjoy it because you're good at it? Or it comes second nature to you? Or do you enjoy it because it's enjoyable? Because that's a different level of perfectionist. I'm going to only do the things that I know I will guarantee succeed at. And that goes back to Tommy's uh -huh. original point of fear of failure. Yeah, I suppose there's something in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah. You see? Like, yeah, yeah. You understand, gang? This yeah. whole Ouroboros thing. Oh, I should clarify it just in case anybody else is not a weirdo and is not into like, you know, like weird sort of like uh, ancient Greek things. You ever see the dragon that's eating its own tail? That's Ouroboros or snake. Sometimes they say snake. Sometimes they say dragon. That's what an Ouroboros is, just in case. Um, you know, Tommy, this is something that comes up a lot. And it is actually... This is funny. That, my friend, is the key to success, really, on mm. YouTube, is yep. the niche. Everyone thinks like, oh, no one's going to want to hear what I got to say. Even in the smallest communities, let's just say you have a community of only, there's another hundred people in my industry in the entire world that helps people get flooring for stadiums and gyms and high-end office complexes and lobbies and whatever it is, right? That hundred people is the only community you need. All 99 of them and you is the only community you need. You don't need in that, in that level of niche, you don't need a community of choke. Um, for instance, a lot of the guys in there might be ready to retire and be wanting to hand the business off to their kids. Their kids are going to need someone to bounce ideas off and be a guidepost and be a mentor, double check their stuff, whatever. There's a consultancy. So it's funny, but I, I was literally just talking with this with somebody the other day. The smaller the niche, the better. Everyone thinks mm -hmm. that they want to have like, you know, that million subscribers, but that million subscribers is assuming that you're going to let ad rev be your revenue generation source. It's not. Yeah. And should and nor should it be. No one should no one should depend on ad rev. Because YouTube could die in a fire tomorrow and then you'd be jacked. <laughs> so yeah, your your smallest niche is actually better. I, I I don't even know how to explain that, but yeah. I think it was uh I think it was Mr. Cameron Junkie when he was on Alicio's uh, show the other day and he mentioned a channel which was uh, all the channel focuses on is uh three D printed uh, fans for computers <laughs> and that's all the, the channel is and yet is you know 150 subscribers something like that so that's pretty pretty niche <laughs> yeah so hey the, patrice the, good to see you here for some reason for one second i thought patrice was collie but it's patrice <laughs> i like to think there's a really idea behind starting small and focus on what's out there before you get into focusing on the tools yeah 100 percent. like um funny like I, I met Patrice from these random phone calls that we used to do back in the day on TUAW. It was kind of like Clubhouse before Clubhouse. And then I went to go to her channel and there was these cooking videos. And I was like, oh, fam, I like these. I can't understand a lick of what she's saying because it's all in, in German. But like I caught the idea of this, like, you know, watermelon salat. Watermelon salat, or whatever. I, I'm going to get in trouble for just even attempting that. <laughs> Sorry, Patrice. You know I love you. Um, and then and then I was like, yo, that sounds dope. So I'm going to try to do it. So, oh, I see. You're going to flex the Ecamm glass? Uh, sorry. <laughs> mine, is done, up, it? <laughs> mine is upstairs. It has become my water glass of choice now. It's kind of yeah. funny. Um so, but I, I sat through and then I was watching it and then I was like, oh, I have a recipe that I think Patrice would just love. So in our, I don't know if it was our form, our group or a text message or something. So I sent the ingredients like all in Japanese. But a little bit later, the whole thing came up on YouTube in the tiny little kitchen. 
tall person, small kitchen, making like um, it was either like sukune or uh, oyakudonbari is what I was teaching. It's like an egg and chicken dish. And I'm, it's funny to just sit there and watch this video of how to make oyakudonbari in German. <laughs> I was like, I was enamored. <laughs> but that's a small level channel. But like now with the current podcast and things like that, we're getting podcasters. I say we, sorry. She's getting podcasters to come on and talk about the foods that connect them to their childhood and like things they like and whatever. I was the first guest, by the way. Hey, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a freaking dope show. So yeah, you can start small and then just grow into whatever you want to grow into. Um, here's a funny story. Every person in the chat, every single one of you guys, except maybe big rich started small. Cause we all came out like six to eight pounds, whatever. Right. And if you talk to scientists, they will tell you walking is one of the hardest things that we do. And we do it automatically. Nobody remembers how much thousands of times you fell down trying to walk. <laughs> Nobody remembers that. Maybe your people, if you younger folks are cool, your people got video. We didn't have video. We had the woodpecker in the stone, like on the Flintstones to make the video. <laughs> Yours probably had like sketch pad, you know, the, um, what do you call it, a flip book where you go like that. Maybe you got that. But like when Rob and I were around, it was a Flintstones thing. So yeah, you you the hardest thing you do every day, nonchalantly, without even thinking about it, you fell down a couple hundred thousand times before you were able to do it. And then if you're old and drunk like me, you still fall down. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just yeah, funny, man. Like, people forget that. That's like a little bit of one of the phrases that I like to use is failure is not an option. It is a requirement for personal growth. <laughs> because you, if you're not failing, you're like, you're not trying basically. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, you, you're always failing going forward and that's basically the, the walking metaphor, isn't it? Uh, and I've certainly made, had a, a few failures along the way, but it's, those are the ones that you sort of learn uh, the most from. In fact, so I have a, on my, uh, my little day planner. So I've obviously been a bit OCD. I designed and printed my own, uh, index card day planners, but anyway, uh, so, so as well as my tasks on the, uh, on the, on the back of them, I have in the morning, I give my three affirmations and my three uh, things that I'm thankful for. But then at the end of the day, I've got three wins and then like one that I've put just called a lesson. So it's like the biggest lesson. But essentially, that's just being easy on myself because the lesson is always something that I fail from. So it's what's the biggest lesson of the day, basically. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I could have I could have labeled that little box screw ups. But uh, yeah, I called them lessons as well. <laughs> you know, Steve, this makes so much sense that it makes sense had a client that dealt with a completion anxiety, fear of not mm -hmm. complete success, uh, I mean, complete successful at the task and because of that the, you delay the action. I kind of understand that as well, man. That's a thing. Yes, mm -hmm. bro, Patrice, that is all of us, bro. Our whole entire family. Wait, how did Tommy come up? I said Patrice. Our whole entire, like, LGO family, we're pretty much all ADHD. <laughs> I think almost every single one of us are. It's kind of hilarious. We joke about it. Um, but yeah, I think all of us are to some extent. Uh, Jerry said, whenever you talk about a lot and drive your family and friends crazy talking about it is what you should do your YouTube channel about. 100%. Definitely. That is so, yep. so, so true. Dang. Is it really 183,000 subs for 3D printed computer fans? Wow. Cool channel. I had checked it out after he had mentioned it. <laughs> you know, I've seen, I have a friend that's like that, that doesn't seem to want to drive further because they're afraid of the pedestal eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, Steve I think did they're one in the, uh, I think they're one in the same JFK. I think that it's all forms of creators, like whether you're an artist or a musician or a videographer or a writer, writers are really, really bad, right? Really notoriously bad. Um, Stephen King says his alcoholism and 
uh, heroin use comes from being a perfectionist in writing. Read his book on writing, and it will help you understand it. It's a really short book. It's good. Or Annie Lamont, Bird by Bird. Um, she, perfectionism is the tool of the oppressor. Like, that's Annie Lamont uh, saying, for real, though. Like, check out Bird by Bird by Annie Lamont or On Writing by Stephen King, and you'll see. Like, I think it's pretty much all of them. Go ahead. Just coming back to uh, Steve's point, he was on uh, JP Hitech's show uh, last week, and they were talking about uh, imposter syndrome. That is another big, uh, another big factor in people not getting going and making a start, feeling like they they don't have a uh, a platform or you know the right almost to speak to people. And like when um, when people, uh, if you, if you look at like the classic way to start a video, there's something to frame like who the video is for, and then there's also a section where you sort of frame why you have the authority to speak to them. So you'll often see people say this video for you if X, Y, and Z, and my name is so-and-so, and I do, you know, whatever it is you do. Whereas I deliberately just sort of left that particular part out of my videos. So I always start what mine with telling them what the video is about, but then I say, my name's Alec, and that's it. You, that's all you're getting. <laughs> I'm not telling you anything more. You just sort of take it as it comes. <laughs> Okay, gang, back, show over, rap. It's a rap, <laughs> it's a rap. Listen, listen to the man. If you pay attention to the channel, I throw the doc rock, please subscribe, all that crap at the end now. I might come out and say, hey, creators, blah, 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 blah. I'm doc rock, your content creation coach. We're going to talk about blah, blah, blah. That takes me less than a second. When you say, hey, you know, I'm June Kang. Uh, I am the brother of one of the coolest dudes in the planet and he's amazingly handsome and super <laughs> smart and you know i wish i could be like him one day your channel no one's going to watch it even though you're telling pure truth no one's going to watch it just they want <laughs> they came there for them they didn't come there for you you can say who your name is so they're not talking to a stranger but don't wax rhapsodically about who you are in the beginning save that at the end like uh -huh. nobody cares but yeah people can't get over that half the people in the group we told them the 86 the intro they still got intros in their videos Back in Vlogmas, we told everybody, cut the intro out of there. They still got intros in their videos. So what can you say? And uh, June, actually, man, you're so right about this. Waking up in the morning is the hardest thing we do. <laughs> Walking. <laughs> that is mic drop. Little brother, 100%. Patrice <laughs> said, yes, I was the first. And then I was laughing at Jim's comment earlier because it's super hilarious. He goes, I've been listening to this and saying, oh, that, that's me all morning because <laughs> that that's me that's <laughs> i think there's something a lot of us creators just have you know it's a it's a weird thing that's sort of you know built into what we do and i i'm with you and sort of like worthy thing except for i am starting to begin to take umbrage with imposter syndrome mm -hmm. i know i have it i know it's real I know it's a thing. I'm not going to for one second deny Dr. Rosencrantz and her invention because, uh, yeah. But now what people are doing are using it as yet another excuse to not get something done. It's like mm -hmm. the overuse of the word stress. Like what mm -hmm. really is stress? Okay. Your body does things that are stressful all day, every day. Um, but... It's what, it's what you do with it. With anything that's a problem or an obstacle or whatever, it's what you do with it that makes the difference, right? Your obstacle can literally be a you're in a room end-to-end -end with a brick wall and you need to get out and all you have is a spoon. You can get out of a brick wall with a spoon. It will take you a day and a half, but you would absolutely get out. But if you just look at the spoon and go, this wall is too big, there's no way I'm getting out of there, then you'll be stuck. But you take the spoon and you take the end and you literally just rub back and forth on the grout hour at a time, take a break, rub on the grout some more. Eventually, you'll have a hole. And then now you can just kick at it and it will crumble because grout is not that strong. Or mortar, sorry. Mortar is not that strong. It's what causes the bricks to fall in. So you can just sit there and look at it like I'm never getting out of here. Or you can take the handle and just dig at the mortar. Prisoners do it all the time. That's how people escape from Alcatraz. 
But most people will sit there with that spoon and look at that brick wall and go, oh, I'm stuck in here. I'm never getting out. You ain't seen MacGyver. <laughs> MacGyver done got out. I'm just joking. But no, you literally can just dig the mortar with the end of a spoon handle, and it won't take you that long because once it starts to chunk, it starts to chunk heavily. And then if you get one brick out, you can pretty much kick it after that. But most people would just freeze at that first thing and just be done. So you got to do it bird by bird. Like Lewis's comment, people who are imposters don't have the syndrome. <laughs> that is funny as what? <laughs> Yo, that is, I love this, Steve. Failing is your first attempt at learning. Yo, it's super funny. Yeah. That's super funny. That's crazy. I'm just checking on his cover. Oh, bruh. I was like eight something. My mama was like, what the heck? And that eight pounds was mostly head. <laughs> and a tiny little body with a gigantic melon. That's why I couldn't walk till I was like two. Because the head was heavy as sin. <laughs> um, gee, I would say overcoming perfectionism. Um, you know, here, here's what I'm going to say this again. And I love these comments because it allows me to repeat the out of myself. Stop. I got to keep my Miss Eileen from charging me. So <laughs> walking was hard, but you can do it. When you first come out of a bag of liquid after nine months, breathing is hard, but you learn how to do it. Speaking, people will say, if you're from a foreign country, oh, learning English is hard. It was hard for us too. We just learned it at one and a half to two years old, right? Speaking Japanese is hard. Yeah, for me, because I learned English first, well, actually second, and then I learned it. Actually, I learned Japanese third. But when you go, I mean, all of it's hard until it's not, right? You just watch the Olympics. All of those people did things that the body ain't posed to do. But they worked at it for the last four years. Olympics is the best time to remind you to stop making excuses because every single, there's no way that uh, um, Suni Lee came out. Mom, look. Like, no. See, just like us, one step, two step, boom. Da, da, huh, drooling, diaper full of crap. And now she's like, elegantly spiraling, land two feet. Hands in the air, cloud of dust. Where's my metal, people? Like, come on. Everything in the world that you do right now was hard when you started. Whatever your career is was hard when you started. If your career was prostitution, it was hard when you started. It's not so much anymore. Like, come on. Like, as people, at some point, you just got to know the only way to get better at the hard things is to attack it. There's no other way it just ain't if you can name one explain it to me you know what's hard dying you know what we're doing every single day dying so keep wasting time i'm sorry i get you know i rant alec why you come over here and listen to me <laughs> rant <laughs> oh yes writing down another, the bones another, good go ahead sorry go ahead another another sort of thing for people who are not sort of making a start because of their own issues <laughs> like I was uh, not doing because of my own issues is the thing of there's somebody out there actually waiting for what you have got to tell them and you've mentioned it loads uh, Steve mentioned it on one of his uh, shows that he was on as well and it's this thing of like there are, there are people out there actually waiting for what you have got to tell them and it's your duty to sort of share this with the world and that's one of the things that sort of took me by surprise when I started this channel I was all about you know oh I'm, I'm going to do this and you know the point of me me doing it but it was only when I started and then I started getting messages from people uh, and there's, there's people who I know I've had a direct impact on what they're doing and you know they've they've told me I wouldn't have been able to do this without the stuff that you're doing or the help that I've given them and things like that and that's something that uh, is not to be underestimated <laughs> to no matter how good you think you need to be in order to make a start there is somebody that's totally happy with it in whatever rough form you may feel it's in because it's going to actually help somebody to move forward in their lives it is it is so true okay hey check this out i think you are you're on to something jfk honestly we are never going to beat our perfectionism 
So we're going to use it to the best of our ability. I don't think we'll ever beat it. I think it's way too far <laughs> ingrained in us. But so there's a saying, an old school saying, that just because a message may not be received doesn't mean it's not worth sending, right? Mm -hmm. Just because perfectionism can't be whooped, in my opinion, I could be wrong, doesn't mean it's not worth trying. So we're going to keep trying, and then we're still going to, I know, I, trust me, I, I, you tweak out on thumbnails still, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tweak out on edits. Mm -hmm. Luis ain't even ready for me to get after him about this first edit. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I tweak on edits. I'm sorry, I just do. Like, I tweak on dumb stuff. Y'all don't even notice the fades and stuff I put in. Y'all don't notice the notches that I put in for the voice to fit at certain areas. Or none of that stuff. But, yo, I tweak, man. There's a lot. I think um, the comment comes up that people, own, this is the thing about Instagram, right? People only see the end product. They don't see mm -hmm. the million, millions of attempts of the misses. So, like, on Dude Perfect, trust me, they're not hitting those shots on the first go. There's a lot of planning and thinking and math and even the math problems to get the angles right, the trajectories and all of that to come through. All you see is the dude perfect in real, right? All you see is Jungle Cruise. You don't see the outtakes until you stick around at the end of the movie and to see the rock flub his lines all the time, right? <laughs> they shot a large portion of that in Hawaii. There were days where they had to stop because the sky was just like, I don't want to see you film this movie. And you don't see none of that. You see the finished product. Most of us are looking at Kim Folk's finished product. And so all your favorite YouTubers... Search their channel and see if you can find their flub reels and watch how much they flub. I tend to start to leave my flubs in there now. It's crazy. My videos are all just one big flub. <laughs> <laughs> I think you you learn to walk when you're a baby because you don't remember how hard it is as an adult learning to Oh, <laughs> thank you, man. Obs, uh, come on, girl. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. So for you guys who are new to the family and you don't really know, Ops had a severe accident with a traumatic brain injury, and she had to learn to rewalk at 21 years old with a lot of experience. I won't tell your people your age. <laughs> I'm not dumb. Like I ain't trying to get beat up by women on my stream. <laughs> but, but, like, yes, as an adult, she had to learn to rewalk and redo a lot of things. And, no, it's not easy, man. It's not easy. Right. Yeah. I had to relearn how to eat and, and talk after a stroke too. I was out for a little bit. <laughs> Pritchie said, I'm gonna live forever. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You know, um, Melvin, I have a question for you, right? <laughs> Blowing it to a metal tube with three pistons and making music is hard, but done every day. Holla. Melvin, how long did it take you? to learn say you know your basic scales on the um on your trumpet and then like how long have you been playing all together where you are dropping music like you drop it that's a curious question <laughs> he said his only fans is hard dude only fans is coming out for regular folks now Super funny. I'm laughing at my friend trying to get me to come drinking in the middle of the day. It's like 9 13 a.m. <laughs> um uh oh. I wonder what Rich said. <laughs> yep. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um Yes, exactly. Exactly. 100%. So it's kind of funny. It's real. I mean, this is real basic stuff, but yeah. So what would be your advice for, I know this is going to sound crazy, but what would be your advice for anyone that's on the struggle bus with the whole procrastination move? Like, or sorry, the perfectionism move. What would be your answer? Reassess your minimum viable product, I think, is the big one. So understand what you're comfortable with to actually make that start. And uh, yeah, just start doing it and knowing. So I'm doing uh, later live every day in August. 
And one of the first things that they put in there was li <laughs> uh, put in a quote that you live by. So I actually quoted um, <laughs> from uh, the Spinal Tap movie <laughs> because Derek Small said, uh, we don't strive for perfection because perfection is the destination. Imperfection is the journey. <laughs> now, if you take out the first part of that, that is the point of it really like you're never going to reach the absolute perfection and so it's just enjoying that the journey of the imperfection part of it and so that is something that's uh i think something to consider <laughs> and uh, yeah just ev everything else about you know there is somebody out there waiting for whatever message you've got to give and uh nobody really cares ultimately about the things that you think you care about you everybody's always uh, or I certainly am. I should speak for myself. I'm always my own worst critic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> guaranteed. Most people just don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm always my worst critic and Will June. He's pretty critical. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I love Paul's comment right here. Hey, while my life began at 40, remember the warranty has expired. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rich said, wow, that quote goes to 11. I was thinking the same yeah, thing, definitely. Rich. It goes, when he said Spider Tab movie, first thing I came to was, it goes to 11? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking about going to 11, we have class at 11, so we're not going to go to 11. Man, this is dope. I mean, I just, first of all, I can't say enough about what you've been able to pull off. Um, oh, thanks, man. It's, it's, it's the thing. It's, it's a thing. It should be applauded. You, you know, you hear me talk about this in class all the time. Take time to celebrate the victories. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is a victory, bro. Like what you did in a two month time frame is a victory. And I'm definitely doing the the video every day in August thing, but I'm going to do it with an iPhone because I, I am going to say what most people won't do is take their quality back to their, you know, lower quality thing. I'll do it because I don't care. I'm not that much into like, oh, I have to look a certain way. I, I like to summer in Cambridge in the winter. Like what? Shut up. <laughs> like I'm not that dude. I don't care about that. I care about everybody moving the needle and taking some of the things out of the way, right? And then so I'm willing to go back. Now, here's why it's going to be a little bit lie because it will sit on the gimbal. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to just sit out here and do this, right? I will pull the gimbal. I pulled it out already, right? Hey, don't get caught in the wire. So I will have this, you know, flipped up camera in it. Still nice looking stuff. And it is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. So it's not exactly the crappiest phone. I'm not going to take the 8 down. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> there is, even when you call yourself trying to circumvent your perfectionism, um, you still will polish things. It's just weird. It's just a thing. It's in there. No, I'm not recording in 720p. You shut up, Mr. Camera Junkie. You shut, <laughs> you shut all the way up. There's no way I'm doing it in 720p. Um, that's why comedians are for sexual because of the, I don't give up and don't care attitude. Late night TV host, not afraid to make mistakes, 100%. And I think that's what's been so dope about Alex Channel is Alex just comes out here, he does one take Jake, right? Take one take. Like, literally just put it out in, like, one thing. And that's the cool part of it. So, again, if you're struggling... This is hard, people. Like, if you're struggling with your your content and you're struggling with what to do and you're just trying to see to do what's next, just go live. Live is a game changer, man. It really, really... Freaking... I can see Paul's comment from here out the corner of my eye. He said, I'm going to be doing black and white silent stream. Like, <laughs> Doc Rock wakes up in the morning and walks to the beach. I'm just cut the little mustache and wear the bowler. Yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> that's that's super funny. I need that I've calliope couple, piano music. <laughs> I've got a couple of other things that might help people if they haven't actually made their first video yet. So there's first of all, when you're doing your first one, like when I I, I did my first uh, live stream was my first video on YouTube, and then the very next day was my first day in in your office hours. So there's two things there. First of all, when I did my first live stream, nobody watched it because I didn't have any followers. I was at zero subscribers. 
Uh, and so you're sort of doing this thing and you don't really know who your audience is or who's watching. But it's so true that the first one is the hardest because once you start, I mean, I actually did a few where nobody was watching, but that's besides the point. Once you start getting people who are watching with your videos and interacting, you you can actually put a face to the people that you're speaking to. And so you end up that there's like, there's often times when I'm making a video and it's because somebody specifically asked me about it or asked me for it. And I'm then speaking to a person and I'm not speaking to the, you know, the camera or putting on some show or something like that it's literally i'm just telling some particular person how to do a particular thing so that takes a huge part of the uh the you know the the, the effort out of it uh, but the other thing is when i joined your uh, group so buymeacoffee.com slash dot rock <laughs> when i signed up to that right i didn't really know i didn't really know what to expect and i kind of thought well is it going to be something like where you know there's 30 minutes or an hour or something like that and it's you just doing more of the the youtube stuff and i was totally blown away by what an amazing community it is that you've built around this and so when you when you're going into something and you're not sure what to expect you know it's like the zoom call started up and i thought you know the anticipation of wondering what it's going to be like and the very first and then you words find out we're just a bunch of lunch boxes making noise <laughs> well that everyone's the same yeah but the the thing that really stands out is the very first thing that was said on that call was uh rob said oh well, it looks like we've got a new face in today alec how are you and it's like it's such an open and welcoming community uh, is the first part the second thing is it's not just all about one person <laughs> you although you hold it all together it's the sort of combined hive mind of everybody that we've got in there and everybody's just rooting for everyone and it's such a diverse group of people doing all sorts of different things but we're all held together by this sort of common bond of the thing that we're doing and it's it's been something that's been a huge motivator to me and so if you are struggling to start, then being a member of a group like that, ideally that particular group, <laughs> is a great way to uh, to help because you do find that you're like constantly uh, spurred on by you know what other people are doing in the best possible way, you know, and you hear about things that you know new techniques or things like that that people are trying, and uh, people keep you in check even if it's only you know subconsciously. You know, I think well, I've I've set this goal. It's kind of like accountability and all that. I can't speak highly enough for. Uh, your group in particular <laughs> and Thank just the, the community in general it's uh, it's been a huge part of how i've been able to do what i'm doing at the moment i i think that you know first of all i appreciate it. that means that means way more to me than i think i could probably express because when i did it i didn't want it to just be me talking at people I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to like say what they wanted to say and feel what they want to feel. And we do, I mean, we have, you talk about roller coaster of emotions in that group. <laughs> we had everything from like, here's some advice. This is hard or this is good or yelling and screaming or arguing. And then Jerry will say like his one thing he says a month and it's like a mic drop, like floor explosion. And Jerry's sitting over there like, hi, I'm Jerry O'Connor. <laughs> you know, like, damn it, Jerry, where you came from? <laughs> so, yeah, it's just great. Like, it's great. Even Michael and Devin, who would sit in the corner and be quiet all day, and then they finally will say something, and it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. that was amazing, right? So I love the, the shyness of people that are coming out. And then, you know what warmed up my soul the, the most to me coming from our group? Michael says, okay, gang, I'm ready to go. And everybody was like, yo, let's rally and meet homie on his first stream and like make sure that he has a good time and whatever. That like, yo, that sat with me for like an entire week, you know, because, you know, Mike Powell could do what other retiree guy do sit there and yell at the TV. But like, no, he's going to sit out here and stream and put himself, his vulnerability out there, tell his stories and then look cool as hell while he's doing it, which is more funny yeah. because when he did it, it's natural. It's like, yo, he was made for this, right? He was built for mm -hmm. it. And that's why we were teasing him. Like all the ladies at the senior center are going to be calling up. Be like, yo, Mike, what you doing today? You know, girl working on my little live stream, you know, me and my people. <laughs> so I love that. That was so freaking amazing. And so I, and again, what you said earlier was 
something that I do often. I will comb the comments of my streams or other streams or whatever. And when I do a video, I will make a call to that person and kind of answer that person directly. Mm, if it's something yeah. where I got to get in their case, I won't necessarily call them out, but I will bring up, how the heck did you get a whole different beverage? <laughs> I, will bring up, <laughs> I will bring up something they say, right? So, and Keith does that very well too. Keith will talk about me or Miss Eileen or you or whomever in his videos. In, let your people into your videos, man. Like, talk to mm -hmm. them directly. Don't feel like you're talking to the whole blank YouTube. Mm -hmm. Talk to your people directly because, again, that smaller, tight tribe is better than the gigantic, faceless tribe. Like, yeah. I love seeing the faces of the people in our group. I love, you know, like, if something were to happen and... I couldn't do it one day. I could completely hand the keys to Rob or you or, or Miss Eileen or anybody. And they could just run it because there's no like one person that had to be there, right? Like everybody's there together. Mm -hmm. We all come in with the same sort of level, even the new people, you know, miles just come in and last week we all group hugged them and was like, come on, damn it. Let's go. You know? And then I think, I think he got a kick out of that. I think, you know, like he told me personally in our private call that he found his crew when he found us. Cause that's just a group mm -hmm. of people that we've lucky enough to amass. And then, so, yeah, you know, I, I think, yeah, I thank you for that. That means a lot to me and it's important. Yes, Carlos. It's like, um, streamer holics anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> something I have been a streaming crackhead for the last eight months. Like, I don't know what you call our group. We are weird, but we have a blast. So I, if you guys don't know like what we're talking about, go ahead, go ahead. I, I like when uh, Miles said uh, in the, the office hours, I think it was last week or the week before, he says, oh, yeah, I've, I just want to tell everyone I'm a little bit ADHD. And everyone just in unison said, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's all of us. <laughs> That was super funny. I, th I think that might have shocked him a little bit because, like, we all was like, yep, welcome to the party. Yeah. And it's funny because the older guys, like myself and, and uh, Rob, Paul, Joel, all of us, we came before there's a name for it or medicine or whatever. We were considered bad or special ed or everybody thought we were broken, right? So the younger guys like him, they got a name for the thing. But for us, uh -huh. we was possessed by the devil. Like nobody knew <laughs> as a Catholic school kid, something wrong with that boy. Like they just didn't know uh -huh. he's, as they say in, in, in the black community, he's a little touched. But as, as I got older and figured out like, Hey, I'm not broken. Like there's a lot of people like me. This yeah. is normal, right? Well, semi normal. What is normal? Let's talk about it. That's a whole different story. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I get a kick out of it that it, at least you guys, have a name for it and some books about it for us. We was just considered the elf on the shelf, kind of like broken kids in the alley, kids in the attic or whatever that movie is called toys in the attic. There you go. We were just weird. So yeah. And <laughs> we do major air hugs in the group. Yes, Paul. <laughs> yes. This is great, man. For those of you guys who don't know what Alec is talking about, he is speaking of the Drop Squad. We are Doc Rock P performers. We basically hang out. We have a good old time. And we just, yeah, all of the things he just said. It is literally one of the funnest things I get to do all week. So that is fantastic. Also, reminder, next, speaking of broken people, I'm joking. <laughs> next Saturday, <laughs> we're going to have the fantastic, the fabrolist Callie. And you guys all know her from the Elf on the Shelf in the back of live streaming pros. We're going to come and we're going to talk story about community building. And she dared me to put the mush face picture on the thumbnail. So, you know, I did it because don't dare me, lady. <laughs> <laughs> so gang this has been dope alec man i really appreciate you for coming on and i am very 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 um proud of what you did not that my pride matters but i'm proud of what you've been <laughs> able to do i think it's a quite incredible feat and yeah i don't know if you know this but you've been published on the ecamm blog like three maybe four times already just because of the <laughs> stuff that you've been making which is you know very good there you oh, go. thanks man I really appreciate yes. it. Yes, right? We all learned so much last week while uh, going through the 
Ecam and Dropbox fiasco. True story, bro. <laughs> True story. I am, I'm broken. <laughs> I just bit <laughs> and messed up. <laughs> hey, I, that's a good, better answer, um, Kathy. We're all bent. We're not broken. We're just a bent. That's what Aubrey said. We're not broken. Thank you, gang. I will see you, half of you folks in class. The rest of you guys, stop slipping. Jump over to the buy me a coffee link. That's the, the thing telling me to go drink more water. Um, <laughs> get jump on the coffee link, buy me a coffee link and come to class and just check it out. It's an absolute blast. We would love to have you. You don't have to be ADD, but it helps. <laughs> <laughs> it helps a lot. It'll help you keep up with the craziness that's going on. Alec, you're a boss. Gang, it's time to play some City of Mind. As soon as I find out what I did with it. And Luis, no, I did not move it to the Roadcaster Pro yet. City of Mind. <laughs> I'll see you guys this weekend. How Thank you, brother. I love the city of mine It never gets me down City of mine How I love, how I love The city of mine It never gets me down, yeah I was born in the city I was raised on its edges My pop work is life on its complex I found love in its center If I could live here forever